the universe as we currently understand it exploded into existence with the Big Bang, and it's been expanding ever since. Galaxies are hurtling away from each other, and space itself is stretching like a cosmic rubber band. But what if this expansion isn't the end of the story? What if the universe's ultimate fate is a dramatic U-turn, a collapse back into itself in a fiery inferno? This is the mind-blowing idea behind the Big Crunch. A scenario where the universe's expansion slows down, stops, and then reverses, pulling everything back together in a catastrophic collision. The story of the Big Crunch begins, surprisingly, with the question posed to the great Isaac Newton way back in the 17th century. Richard Bentley, a scholar and churchman, was preparing a lecture about Newton's theories and their implications for the existence of God. He wrote to Newton with a question that would become known as Bentley's Paradox. Bentley asked, If the universe is finite and all the stars attract each other through gravity, wouldn't they eventually collapse into a single point? And if the universe is infinite with infinite stars, wouldn't the infinite gravitational forces tear all the stars apart? It was a simple question with mind-blowing implications. It challenged the very foundation of Newton's theory of gravity, suggesting that a universe governed by gravity couldn't be stable. It would either implode or explode. This paradox, in a way, foreshadowed the Big Crunch theory, hinting at the possibility of a universe collapsing under its own weight. But back then, people thought of stars as fixed points in space, not the dynamic moving objects we know them to be today. We now know that stars are constantly in motion, orbiting the centers of galaxies and moving through the vast expanse of space. This motion counteracts the pull of gravity, preventing the universe from collapsing in on itself, at least for now. But the question of the universe's ultimate fate remained open. Could gravity eventually win the tug of war, pulling everything back together in a big crunch? Or would the universe continue to expand forever? Albert Einstein initially thought the universe was static and unchanging. In 1917, he teamed up with Dutch astronomer William de Sitter to see if his theory of general relativity could support this idea. De Sitter crunched the numbers and found that Einstein's equations could indeed describe a simple, unchanging universe. This led many scientists to believe that this static model was the correct picture of the universe. But there was a problem. Einstein's theory of general relativity, while allowing for a static universe, also described a universe that was inherently dynamic, prone to change in motion. This contradicted the observations at the time, which suggested a stable and unchanging universe. Einstein realized that to keep a static universe from collapsing under its own gravity, he needed to introduce a new force, an anti-gravity force that would counteract the pull of gravity. He called this the cosmological constant, and it was basically a fudge factor he added to his equations to make them fit the observations. But this cosmological constant was a bit of a thorn in Einstein's side. There was no observational evidence for it, and it made his elegant equations more complicated. The static universe model was eventually blown out of the water by Edwin Hubble's groundbreaking observations at the Mount Wilson Observatory. Hubble was a meticulous astronomer who carefully measured the distances to various galaxies. He combined his findings with the redshift measurements of Vesto Slipher and Milton Humason. Redshift is like a cosmic Doppler effect. It's when light from distant objects gets stretched, making it look more red. This redshift tells us that those objects are moving away from us. Hubble's analysis revealed a mind-blowing pattern. The further away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us. This relationship, known as Hubble's Law, 
was the first real evidence that the universe was expanding, a discovery that completely changed our understanding of space. Hubble's initial calculations were a bit off, but his main finding was spot on. The universe wasn't static, it was expanding like a motherfucker. This discovery shattered the idea of a static universe and made Einstein's cosmological constant unnecessary. It also kicked off a new era of cosmological research, leading to the development of the Big Bang Theory and other models that describe the universe's evolution. Einstein famously called the cosmological constant his biggest blunder, regretting his attempt to force a static model onto a dynamic universe. With Hubble's law shaking up the world of physics, Einstein had to admit that his biggest blunder was no longer needed. The universe wasn't static, it was expanding, and there was no need for a fudge factor to keep it from collapsing. Einstein even visited Hubble at the Mount Wilson Observatory to thank him for basically proving him wrong. It was a big moment in science, showing that even the greatest minds can be wrong, and that new discoveries can completely change our understanding of the universe. With the expansion of the universe confirmed, both Einstein and Newton's ideas about a static or contracting universe went out the window. Scientists started to embrace the idea of a dynamic and evolving universe, leading to the development of the Big Bang Theory and other models that describe how the universe has changed over time. The Big Crunch, while a dramatic and captivating idea, might not be the only way the universe could end in a fiery collapse. It sparked another intriguing concept, the cyclical universe, also known as the Big Bounce. Imagine a universe that's not just expanding, but also contracting. In this scenario, the Big Crunch isn't the end, but rather a transition, a turning point that leads to a new Big Bang and a fresh start for the universe. With the universe expanding and contracting, creating and destroying in an endless cycle of renewal. Our current universe, in this view, is just one iteration in an infinite chain of universes, each with its own unique properties and stories to tell. This cyclical view of the universe challenges our traditional understanding of time, where there's a clear beginning and end. Instead, it suggests a continuous loop, a cosmic groundhog day where the universes keep repeating itself but with variations and surprises in each cycle. Even Albert Einstein briefly considered this idea back in 1931. He imagined a universe that existed before the Big Bang, undergoing a previous cycle of expansion and contraction. He even entertained the possibility that the cycle could repeat infinitely. While Einstein eventually moved on from this idea, other scientists and cosmologists have continued to explore the concept of the cyclic universe. Some models suggest that the universe might go through a series of bounces, with each bounce leaving behind subtle clues or remnants that we might be able to detect through observations. The Big Bounce concept has also been explored in more recent cosmological models, such as the ekpyrotic theory. This theory, developed by Paul Steinhardt and his colleagues, offers a different take on the cyclical nature of the universe. Instead of a traditional Big Crunch followed by a Big Bang, the ekpyrotic model suggests that the Big Bang was the result of a collision between two parallel universes or brains in a higher dimensional space. Our universe exists on one of these brains, and when it collides with another brain, it's like a cosmic fender bender that triggers a new Big Bang. In this scenario, the collision of the brains is like the Big Crunch, marking the end of one cycle and the beginning of another. The matter and radiation we see today are remnants of quantum fluctuations that happened before the collision. It's like the debris left over from the cosmic crash. According to the ekpyrotic model, our universe will keep expanding for billions of years, but eventually it will start to contract. This contraction will lead to another brain collision, another big bang, and a fresh start for the universe. The ekpyrotic theory has some advantages over earlier cyclical models. It addresses some of the problems associated with the Big Crunch, like why the universe appears to be so flat and why we don't see certain types of particles called magnetic monopoles. These problems are resolved by the presence of dark energy, which in the ekpyrotic model is explained as the force between the brains. The ekpyrotic model also allows for an infinite number of cycles in both the past and the future. This means the universe might have no beginning or end, just an endless cycle of expansion and contraction. 
but the ekpyrotic theory has its own challenges. The concept of brains, which is central to the theory, is still not fully understood within string theory, which is a theoretical framework that tries to unify all the forces of nature. There are also concerns about whether the patterns of density fluctuations in the early universe, which are important for explaining the formation of galaxies and other structures, could survive the Big Crunch. The conformal cyclical cosmology model, proposed by physicist Roger Penrose, offers a mind-bending twist on the idea of a cyclical universe. It suggests that the universe goes through endless cycles of expansion and contraction, but with a unique mechanism that sets it apart from other cyclical models. Imagine a universe that expands and expands, eventually reaching a point where all matter decays and transforms into light. In this state, with no mass or distance scales left, the universe becomes indistinguishable from the initial conditions of the Big Bang. It's like the universe hits the reset button, erasing all the structures and complexities it has built up over billions of years. This reset effectively creates a kind of big crunch, but instead of a fiery collapse, it's a smooth transition into a new Big Bang, starting a fresh cycle of expansion. This model addresses a problem that plagues many traditional big crunch scenarios, the buildup of entropy, or disorder. In the triple C, the decay of matter into light resets the entropy clock, preventing the universe from reaching a state of maximum chaos and allowing for a new cycle to begin. Penrose and his colleague Vahe even suggested that we might be able to find evidence for the cyclical cosmology in the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB. They predicted that specific patterns in the CMB, like concentric rings with uniform temperature, could be the remnants of gravitational waves from supermassive black hole collisions in the previous cycle of the universe. However, as of 2020, these predicted signatures haven't been found in the CMB data. This casts some doubt on the specific predictions of the Triple C, but it doesn't necessarily rule out the entire model. Critics of the Triple C have also raised concerns about the requirements for all particles to lose their mass as the universe ages, a condition necessary for the universe to return to its initial state and trigger a new Big Bang. But Penrose has countered these criticisms by pointing to other evidence for Triple C, like concentric rings in the CMB that he believes are not random fluctuations, but specific patterns caused by gravitational waves from the previous cycle. Loop Quantum Cosmology, or LQC for short, is a fascinating approach to understanding the universe that challenges some of the traditional ideas of the Big Bang. It's based on a theory called loop quantum gravity, which suggests that space and time aren't continuous, but are actually made up of tiny, discrete chunks like pixels on a screen. Now, in the standard Big Bang model, the universe starts from a singularity, an infinitely small and dense point. But LQC says, hold on a minute, that doesn't make sense. It proposes that instead of a singularity, there was a quantum bridge between a contracting universe and an expanding universe. Imagine the universe like a bouncing ball. It contracts, reaches a certain point, and then bounces back, expanding again. This bounce is driven by quantum geometry, the idea that space and time are quantized at the smallest scales. It introduces a new force that prevents the universe from collapsing into a singularity, causing it to bounce back instead. This resolution of the singularity has some mind-blowing implications. It challenges the idea that the Big Bang was the absolute beginning of the universe, suggesting that there might have been something before. It also opens up new possibilities for exploring the very early universe, the period right before and after the bounce. To study this quantum bounce, scientists use a simplified framework called the Effective Dynamics Approach. It's like using a simplified map to navigate a complex city. It might not show every detail, but it gives you a good overall picture. Numerical simulations have shown that this effective dynamics approach works pretty well in most cases, providing a good approximation of the full loop quantum dynamics. But there are some limitations. In situations where quantum fluctuations are very large, the effective dynamics might not be completely accurate. Despite these limitations, LQC offers a compelling alternative to the traditional Big Bang cosmology. It resolves the singularity problem, provides a natural mechanism for inflation, which is that period of rapid expansion in the early universe, and opens up new avenues for exploring the universe's past and future. While current observations suggest a big freeze scenario, where the universe keeps expanding and cooling down, some interesting possibilities emerge from certain physical theories. 
If a special type of dark energy called quintessence is the main driver of the universe's acceleration, and if our current observations about dark energy are correct, a surprising twist could occur. The accelerating expansion we see today might actually reverse within the next 100 million years, leading to a phase of contraction. This scenario, proposed in a study by Anna Ehis and Paul Steinhardt, aligns with cyclical models of the universe and recent theories in quantum gravity. This study suggests that the universe could enter a phase of slow contraction that lasts for about a billion years before transitioning back into a new phase of expansion. This possibility challenges the traditional view of a linear timeline for the universe, where it just keeps expanding forever. Instead, it opens the door for a cyclical model, where expansion and contraction alternate in a never-ending dance. While the Big Crunch might not be the most likely ending for our universe, it's still a mind-blowing scenario to consider. Physicist Paul Davies has painted a vivid picture of what might happen if the universe were to collapse back in on itself, and let me tell you, it's not pretty. Imagine a universe that's like a runaway train, hurtling towards a head-on collision. Galaxies would start crashing into each other, stars would be flung around like pinballs, and the whole universe would become a chaotic mess. As the universe contracts, the CMB would start to heat up. This increasing temperature would be bad news for stars. The coldest stars would be the first to go, unable to radiate away their heat and eventually evaporate like puddles in the summer sun. Then, as the temperature keeps rising, even the hottest and most massive stars would boil away. In the final minutes of the Big Crunch, the universe would become a scorching inferno. The temperature would soar to unimaginable heights, ripping apart atoms and atomic nuclei. The remnants of matter would then be swallowed up by black holes, which would themselves merge and grow, becoming monstrous cosmic vacuum cleaners. Finally, at the moment of the Big Crunch, all matter and energy in the universe would be compressed into an infinitely small and dense point, a singularity. This cataclysmic event would be the end of everything as we know it. but some theories suggest that it could also be the beginning of something new.